In this video, we're going to talk all things cervical dizziness or cervical vertigo. If you've been diagnosed with this or if you just want to know more about it, grab a pen, grab a pad, grab a coffee and sit down and get comfortable. We're going to really break it down. We're going to go over what causes cervical vertigo, who's more likely to get cervical vertigo, how do you diagnose cervical vertigo, and most importantly, how to treat cervical vertigo and what does the research say on what's the most effective thing to do. If you've got questions, we've got answers. Stay tuned. Let's get into the video. Well, welcome back to another episode of Physio Tips with Mauro. I'm your host, Mauro Burnett. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm a board certified orthopedic specialist in physical therapy and the owner of Australian Physiotherapy Specialists located here in Jacksonville, Florida. For today's video, we're going to tackle the topic of cervicogenic dizziness or cervical vertigo. Let's start by defining what this is. In 1955, two doctors named Ryan and Cope discovered if they injected anesthetic drugs into their upper neck, it induced dizziness, disequilibrium, and imbalance to that side. Since that time, many other experiments have been done with similar results. We now know that pain or some type of joint problem or inflammation in the upper neck can easily disrupt the nerves that flow through the upper neck and cause dizziness or imbalance. That's what we would call cervicogenic dizziness. Cervicogenic dizziness, it's a little different than traditional vertigo in the fact that you don't get such a severe spinning sensation as much. More so you get just a feeling of being off or disequilibrium. This could last uh, all day long, weeks, months. It can be chronic. It can be pretty terrible. And it just doesn't go away like the brief vertigo that we talked about before. So causes can be easily triggered from trauma, maybe a car accident, sports injury, concussion, um, playground accident when you're a kid. If you can think back in your history, has there ever been something that maybe um, disrupted your neck? Did you have an injury? Did you fall asleep on the couch? Wrong. Maybe even worked out wrong. Anything that can stir up your neck and cause pain or inflammation or irritate your joints is a potential cause for cervicogenic dizziness. The next question we're going to tackle is how does the upper neck cause dizziness? The most common talked about cause of cervicogenic dizziness in the literature today is a disruption of what's called proprioception. Proprioception is a term that means joint position sense awareness. Every joint in our body has nerve receptors called proprioceptors that give us data to where our body is at in space. Great example, I close my eyes, I lift my arm, and if I lift my arm, I know that my palm is down, the back of my hand is up, now I know my thumb is up, now I know my palm is up, right? And I knew that without visual feedback because I have proprioceptive nerves in my shoulder. In the base of your head, you have about 250 proprioceptors per gram of muscle tissue embedded into your muscles. So any injury to your neck disrupts proprioceptive information. For your balance system, we need the organs of your ear to work properly, we need vision, and we need proprioception. If we have all three of those, that's going to help us to be better balanced, it's going to help us with our posture. Proprioception is also important for joint stability. The better your proprioceptors work, the better your brain can control the muscles of your neck to protect your neck um, while you're doing your daily activities. Maybe you're bending over to do some cleaning at home. Maybe you're doing some yard work. Proprioceptive plays a big important role in joint stability. Studies show if you have compromised joint stability, oftentimes we're going to find errors in your joint position sense. So that's a great working idea on how neck pain can easily disrupt your balance. Who does cervical vertigo affect the most? Anyone can get cervical vertigo, but most commonly, we're gonna see people that have had concussions or whiplash injuries. 
maybe cervical arthritis or what's called spondylosis. If you have had a recent bed rest, bed rest leads to deconditioning and weakness of your entire spine, especially your cervical spine. Um, any type of trauma to the head, that's also going to make you likely to be a suspect of having cervical dizziness as well. So whiplash, concussion, sports injury, any of these things could be uh, a possible candidate for cervicogenic dizziness. One of the things I wanted to mention was bed rest. I mentioned that a second ago. Bed rest, it's so crucial that if someone does have cervicogenic dizziness, most of the patients that I have, the ones that are the hardest to get better are the ones that are in prolonged bed rest or self-imposed bed rest. What makes us have strong necks and strong backs is our ability to stand against gravity with good posture, stand and walk and move frequently. In third world countries where people routinely carry weights on their head, neck and back dysfunction are a fraction of what they are in Western culture. So if we're laying in bed all day, if you're sitting at a computer all day with bad forward posture, or if you're in a recliner frequently, your neck just doesn't get the adequate weight bearing exercise that it needs to have that strength and control to protect your neck. When it comes to joint stability, you need a good muscular endurance. We talked about proprioception, you need that as well. But that muscular endurance and strength and the timing of your neck muscles are so crucial for protecting your neck and keeping it from being in a painful state. So that's my tip of the day there. If you're doing a lot of bed rest, I know it feels awful, you feel off balance, you feel dizzy, maybe it's giving you a bad headache. Um, but if you can make yourself get up at least maybe every 30 minutes, even if you just move around for two or three minutes and you keep doing that, that's a great tip to help you fight back and get your strength back in your neck. How do you diagnose cervical vertigo or cervicogenic dizziness? It's another great question. This is gonna have to be a process of ruling out other disorders. Cervicogenic dizziness is still a bit controversial because the signs and symptoms look so similar to other types of dizziness disorders. So your doctor is gonna have to run some tests to rule out other disorders like BPPPV. BPPV is benign proximal positional vertigo this is a very common form of vertigo where the crystals become dislodged in the semicircular canals of your ear and can give you a false sense of spinning. So your doctor is going to run a barrage of tests to rule out vestibular problems, hearing loss, BPPV, etc. Your doctor might also run things like x-ray or MRI to see if there's obvious signs of cervical pathology. So those are going to be your common ways that you're going to get diagnosed for cervicogenic dizziness. For physiotherapy perspective, um, there's a couple signs and symptoms that are very helpful. And we made a couple really good videos on our channel, Physio Tips with Mauro. And at the description section at the end of this video, we're going to load those videos for you. So you can just click on the links and go right to those videos. A couple really helpful videos where you can look at your signs and symptoms, watch the video and be able to tell, hey, maybe I'm having some of these signs and symptoms. Lastly, how is cervical vertigo treated and is there a treatment or do I have to live with this condition? That's probably the most important question. Cervical vertigo can definitely be treated and definitely improved. There's many research studies showing that physical therapy or physiotherapy can be very effective uh, decreasing the symptoms of cervicogenic vertigo and improving your balance. Vestibular therapy is out there as well. Um, some of the exercises can be very helpful. However, what I recommend to my patients and what I do for my patients, if the neck is the main cause of the dizziness, the first thing that we have to tackle is we've got to get the neck feeling better. So find yourself a physiotherapist in your area that specializes in manual therapy that has a good understanding of deep, deep muscle cervical exercises. Australia is famous for their fantastic exercises for helping the cervical spine. There was a great researcher named Gwendolyn Jewell that published tons of textbooks and research articles. It's really been a great um, guiding point for countries all over the world. Uh, I use her exercises every day. They're very, very effective for decreasing dizziness. 
We've done several videos on exercises that you can do to reduce dizziness on our channel as well. Physio Tips with Mauro. So again, at the end of the video in the description, I'm going to put another link with one of my videos that I like a lot, the three or four simple exercises that you can do to start getting your neck feeling better, decrease your headaches, decrease your dizziness, and get you feeling better. So there is hope. Physical therapy can definitely be effective, especially manual therapy. So that would be my recommendation. Find someone in your neighborhood that specializes in these type of uh, manual therapy techniques or Gwen Jewel style um, cervical exercises. And I think that's going to put you on track to feeling better. Well, thanks for watching today's videos on all things cervicogenic dizziness. Hopefully this video was helpful for you in your condition. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. And remember, you could subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this in the future. Remember to hit that bell and it'll give you notification when our videos come out. Remember to hit that like button and drop me a comment on maybe the dis dizziness that you've been having lately. If you find some of these exercises are helpful, I'd love to hear about it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Physio Tips with Mara.